Eugene Ferrara runs a highly successful accounting practice in Melbourne called More Than Tax. Now, Eugene and his team are advisors to some of Australia's major corporates and major wealth earners. And today, Eugene's joining us here at The Informer to talk about the impact that Andrew's government's extreme lockdowns have had on industry, small business and his clients. Welcome, Eugene. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good, thanks. Now, Eugene, being at the coalface with your clients and accountant, you would have the finger on the pulse as to how the Andrews government's lockdowns have been affecting your clients. What can you tell us? Yeah, it's certainly been a phrase that I hear a lot is uncharted territory. Um, in recent times, there's been a lot of um, a lot of federal government, sorry, state government um, literature come through about different types of uh, rescue packages and what have you. But there's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of impact. And, and most of the people who are applying for these are finding that it's only scratching the surface because of the fact that, you know, the drop of a hat, they've been told to close their doors with, with hardly any warning, any planning, which is really affecting the hospitality industry, um, personal services like hairdressers and um, gymnasiums and the like. So yeah, it certainly has an impact. That's on the back of, obviously, the federal impact we had this time last year, where there was a job keeper and, and what have you. And, and there's a, 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 how do I put it? There's a fear out there that they don't know how it's going to look when we come out the other side. Now, we often see um, Dan Andrews on the television talking about roadmaps out, but with small business accounting for such a huge portion of our economy, I, I think it's about 98% of it, we don't seem mm -hmm. to see Minister Pulford or uh, any of the others talking about the roadmap out. Is there any sense of clarity or certainty for businesses that you deal with coming out of it? There's more hope. There's more... Um fatigue they think yeah we've heard it before is it if you ask some of my clients i say oh well october the 26th you know we should be at 70 percent uh, and some of the local cafes will say yeah but we're an indoor restaurant or a cafe we can't really operate outside so in their minds it's november the 5th they'll be opening up again and even that they're not sure about because we seem to get different literature across different media platforms mm -hmm. um insofar as hearing from ministers the only person we really hear from is Daniel Andrews, other than the ministers who are referring to your daily COVID figures and, and what have you. Yeah. Well, we've recently seen reported that the city of Yarra wanted to charge a small business, a cafe, $5,000 per car space to operate outside. How do you think that sort of uh, regulatory overreach, in my opinion, plays in, into businesses' troubles? Well, it's just another cost, isn't it? It's another cost they've got to recover, and no, nah, it would. I haven't come across it myself personally, but I think straight away it would be a suppressant to people operating their business. Some of them aren't reopening after COVID. Yeah. Now, in the UK, after the 2008 GFC um, collapse, we saw their reduction of the VAT, which was the equivalent of our GST, where they dropped it down. I think it was 5% to encourage spending. Do you think our government's agile or forward thinking enough to try and embrace some sort of, um, you know, outside of the box thinking that may aid small businesses? Um, so historically, if, um, if we're going to consider a drop in the, in the GST, then something's got to give the other way. Does that mean there's going to be an increase in income taxes, which a lot of people are crying out for? Um, if anything, I think the government's more than likely going to slowly but surely over time increase the GST because one question that doesn't get um, raised a lot, I don't think, during this whole pandemic is all the money that's coming from the government at the moment, at some point in time, it's going to have to be repaid. So using simple accounting and simple economics, if we've got extra money owing to outside countries through borrowings, how are we going to repay it with reduced taxes? Would increasing the GST be a way forward like we did with the fire levy and the Medicare levy if we put into law a, a temporary a, a cap on it? So three years, increase it, say, 2.5% and get a bit of a war chest back up to pay back some of this? Uh, potentially, and I'd even contemplate keeping it at that level if it meant lower income taxes because people are driven by income taxes. If they've got more money to spend, and they freely spend it, they'll be happy to pay the GST. If they, if they prefer not to spend it and save, then they're getting rewarded for the, for the hard work they're doing. Now, the business grants and uh, rescue packages, however you want to uh, quantify or qualify them, 
I know as a small business owner, I've found them virtually impossible. There was one uh, for my business where you had to have uh, less than uh, more than seventy-five thousand dollar turnover in the last twelve months. But because of lockdown, owning a fitness industry, a gym, <laughs> it yep. didn't qualify because of the lockdown. And then because you have more than ten thousand dollars in savings, again you don't yep. qualify. It was like they were designed. Specifically, it was it was like pulling wings off a fly. Um, how have you navigated it as a professional? Having said that, Mike, I think they pretty quickly rolled that back, the, the $10,000 savings uh, side of things, for that reason, because it was hard to uh, navigate. Uh, look, I'll, I'll preface what I'm about to say by saying I would not want to be a government minister at the moment because the, the, everything is so totally new to everybody. Um, having said that, the, the, the latest um, grants that we've been dealing with uh, for rental relief and so for the tenants and also landlord relief for the owners. And I have a particular client who, uh, because of the pandemic, he had a travel agent in one of his um, premises. So April last year, they closed. Hasn't been able to open up again or hasn't been able to re-rent, re-release the property. And I spoke to Business Victoria yesterday. I said, well, you're offering people discounts for, for um, in their uh, grants, sorry, um, up to $6,000 for people who knowingly or uh, are willing to help their clients, uh, with, sorry, their tenants with, uh, rent, with rent relief. I said, I have a client who hasn't been able to replace a tenant. What relief does he get? And she said, sorry, there's nothing in the legislation for it, which makes it a bit hard. Certainly that came does. from Business Victoria, yeah. Now, as far as um, the fallout from this, I've been through VCAT, had an award, had it registered in the magistrate's court, and the, mm -hmm. the uh, what can I call them, rat bags are just refusing to, <laughs> refusing to respond. As an, account, yeah. as an accountant, what, what advice would you give to uh, people such as myself that have been through, done, jumped through all the hoops, and now wait in frustration to get some sort of restitution? Um, the most, uh, so we're referring to the Andrews government and the Victorian grants that have been in place since lockdown five started, I gather, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Um, on the whole, the majority of them do go through. They do take their time. Um, there's, so, but so it's the ones who struggle to get them. We've got one at the moment where we've we've ticked all the boxes, answered all the questions according to our records and to the ABR because they, they have to check the industry to what's been listed in the Australian Business Register. This uh, this particular client has ticked all the boxes and yet we still have to uh, chase them up. They've rejected the, the claim and we have no reason why. They, they're the ones that are frustrating. Uh, if, if a client's handling this himself and can't, get any um, satisfactory answer, I would suggest they go to their member of parliament and just say, you know, you're trying to help us out here, but you're putting roadblocks in. And th there is always going to be those anom anomalies and those types of situations. You've just got to be persistent. It's a bit like, um, what is it? The squeaky oil, squeaky oil always gets serviced. There's something like the squeaky wheel, sorry. Yeah, so it's always, um, it always seems to be that way, unfortunately. Yeah, thankfully. And Yeah, and back to what you were saying before, um, I think to some degree, sometimes people throw their hands up and then they just think, this is too hard, I'm, I'm not going to bother. And yeah. it might only be for $2,000 in some cases. Yeah, and thankfully, Eugene, we've dragged ASIC kicking and screaming to address the director's less than <laughs> satisfactory behaviour. Now, oh, very what, good. you've got Dan Andrews in a room or you're standing at the bar having a beer with him. What is the one thing that you would like to get his ear on? What, what would you say needs to be done if you just have one option to do, what what should Dan Andrews do, in your opinion? Um, I think the the most I think the most obvious thing from the most the thing I would ask him is why not be a bit more uh, open and and give the public more information because I think I think no one likes to be told what you have to do. If we're given the information and saying these are the reasons why we're doing it, I think there'd be a lot more uptake personally across all walks of life in Melbourne at the moment. 
All right, Eugene, and one other, so the opposite end of the spectrum. So we've had the man at the top, what advice you would give him. Somebody struggling with their business, the bills are mounting, they're looking at an open date, they've got all of these costs coming up. What would your advice as a tax advisor um, be to them to best, best capitalise on the outcome? The best thing to do at the time, and if they've got no income coming in at all, is obviously th there are grants out there, make sure they've exhausted all those, um, put a cap on all unnecessary expenditure for the time being, because one, if they've got a good business which has been built, being built up over time, and in particular, you just look at the restaurants, when they come out, they will boom again because we've all been locked up, we've all been cooped. I mean, we all saw the pictures in Sydney on Monday morning at 12.01 where pubs were opening and people were celebrating, having a drink. I suspect there's going to be the same type of euphoria for those people here in Victoria. So if you're in the in the hospitality game, I can see a light at the end of the tunnel for them. For the others, it's just the normal business practice. Cap what you can, so expenditure-wise. Um, it's a good time to take stock and see if your business is viable and can survive any future... Um, lockdowns and then once we do so the other, once we do get to the other side of the the tunnel like anything like there's always there's always tomorrow and we do come out of things doesn't matter i mean we as a nation we've survived world wars and various other things and we will get through this as well it's just a matter of um yeah hanging tough and and coming out the other side oh, great way to finish there eugene thanks for the free advice and so eugene <laughs> ferraro from more than tax great to have you on thank you michael have a great day and thanks for the opportunity for um for this little chat.